Hello Makers! I'm Catherine from Minerva and today I'm going to show you how to stitch up the chalk and notch fringe blouse and dress. Let's get to it! Let it go, what's the use in holding on? Can we find a way where we could spend some time alone? You know where to find me, you know which way to go. Now the first thing we got to do is gather up those materials. Now you can grab all of them here on Minerva and in fact we have put together a few kits and the version that I am wearing is actually part of that kit. Everything will be linked down below for you as well as some of the other variations. Now if you do grab a kit from us, here's what's included. So to start, we have this wonderful Egyptian cotton lawn from Stores London. It is so luxuriously soft and floaty. You'll adore it. Next up, we have a paper pattern of the chalk and notch fringe dress right here. And then we have fusible interfacing that goes along with it, as well as some needles and buttons so that you can make absolutely everything. And it wouldn't be complete without some matching thread. Now let's select which view we're going to do. The chalk and notch fringe dress has two views to choose from. View A is the version that I decided to do with these gathered details along the sleeve. And view B has a more simple sleeve. You can also choose between a dress and a blouse version. For this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do the dress version. Once you've decided which version you are going to make, the next step is to cut out all of your pattern pieces in your fashion fabric. Always be sure to pre-wash and dry your fabric in the manner in which you're going to launder your finished garment. Now, the first step here is actually taking all of the fusible interfacing and fusing those pieces on. So we are just going to take these pieces and I'm going to press them ahead of time and then I'm going to place it on. Now it doesn't have any of the seam allowances in the fusible interfacing, so make sure you center that on the piece. I'm using a press cloth here and just use some steam and don't move back and forth with your iron, just lift up so that nothing shifts. I always like to place the pattern piece together with that and um, going in and getting all of the notches that we need. And you're going to repeat that process for both the facing pieces as well as the tab pieces and the center front pieces and the back collar line. Now for steps two, three, and four, the facings. So you'll notice there are some notches on the inside end of the facings. These notches should be pointing towards themselves. And then you've got the three notches on the bottom. And that is how it's going to line up so you don't have anything backwards. And then just to pin those facings together here and take that over to your machine to get those stitched together. So just stitch along here. Now we're going to be using a quarter inch seam to go along the stay stitching around the outside of the facings. So you can see I've just done it here. The regular seam allowances is five eighths of an inch. We've pressed that open prior to stay stitching that. It just gives us a really good pressing line. And then we're going to snip the curves right here. This will enable us when we are pressing over this quarter of an inch over, it'll enable us to really be able to get those curves nice and flat. So just go slowly here. It's easy on this straight portion, but when you get up to this back facing where all the curves are, it's going to get a little tricky. So just go slow and go in between those notches. So you can see that I'm just popping it over one at a time, going in and pressing it down. Now, when you clip those notches, be sure not to clip past the stitching, just up to the stitching. And once you have that all done, your facing should look just like this. So next, this is optional. This is not in the instructions, but this fabric has this gorgeous tag on the salvaged. And I love to incorporate these fun elements into a lot of my makes. So I have decided to just stitch this on. I did a very small stitch length so that it doesn't fray. Then I'm just trimming it away using my applique scissors here. 
So it's just a straight stitch. You could zigzag if you wanted to, and it fits perfectly on the back of the neck facing to give a really fun and unique element to your garment also reminding you of the manufacturer of your fabric, which I absolutely love to include in here. So just carefully trim that away if you like, and it'll look just like so. And now on to step five, the waist ties. Now these are optional and you can place them either in the front or the back darts. Now what you're going to do is place it right sides together along the length of the tie and i'm just loosely pinning these in place and then you are going to stitch all the way down one end going up the other so one end is closed and one end is open then you're just going to trim the corners away on the closed end just so you can get a nice crisp point now i'm using my rouleau turner and i'm actually just poking it through the end. I'm not actually using it the way it's intended to be. This I find is so much easier. Now you could also use a chopstick or a knitting needle for this portion and just go in and turn the loop out. So you've got both of them like so, and I've gone ahead and pressed them. Now for step six and seven, the darts. So on the darts, you are going to measure a half an inch above the end of the waist dart and that is where we are going to place the optional ties. Now, if you're doing this on the back, this will be on the back. In my case, I'm putting mine in the front, so I'm doing it on my front bodice piece. Now, I'm placing the pin vertically, and then I am going to place the dart legs together. So right sides together, and we're going to sandwich that in, and then I am placing the pins right along the legs of the dart, and then I'm going to pull that pin I had on the right side out and place it back in vertically, holding that tie in place. That way it really secures the tie inside. And then you are going to stitch along here like you would any regular dart. And if you're making the larger cup sizes, then you are going to have a bust dart as well, which I do, and you will stitch that. And you can go ahead and stitch the back pieces as well. So when you are doing the dart, go ahead and stitch as you usually would. And when you get to the end, do not backstitch. Leave some nice long tails of thread here because you need to tie those off. Now this creates a smoother line in your dart and you don't have any puckering or bulk when you go to press it out. And it is the way that couture houses tie the ends of their darts. So it should look just like so with your tie in place and then your dart. So next we want to press those darts. So we are just going to take the dart and we are going to press the bust dart down. And then I have gone ahead and pressed the dart that is holding my waist tie towards the front that way when i pull the tie it lies perfectly flat pulling it the other way now you would want to push it towards the center front if you don't have the ties and then in the back you're going to place them towards the centers or the side seams step eight is the shoulder seams so with the shoulder seams here we're just going to place right sides together with the front and back of the bodice and we're going to pin those shoulders in place nice and simple here and the nice thing about using the fusible interfacing on the front is it creates a really nice start and stop on more delicate fabric like a viscose. This one is fine, but sometimes if you're using a very lightweight fabric, it can get sucked up into your feed dogs and using that fusible interfacing really helps. I went ahead and serged those edges and then I've pressed them towards the back of the garment. Now you don't have to serge them, but I would finish them. So next is attaching the facings. So when we attach the facings, we're going to place them right sides together and first match up the center of the facing along the center back, then match up the shoulder seams to make sure we have everything in there just perfectly. Once we have those main points in place, then you can go ahead and distribute the pins along the back of that facing and then matching up the notches along the facing and the front bodice pieces. Then go ahead and stitch that with your 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. 
and when it is done it should look like this we are going to press it so press the seams towards the facing and this is going to prepare it for the understitching i'm just using a pressing ham along the back neck facing because it is a curved edge and i don't want to get any puckers in there so i am going to just make sure that the seam is along the facing side we're going to understitch that so you can see at your machine, it is going to be facing the facing here. And then we are going to stitch about an eighth of an inch away from that seam allowance. And this will really help to create a nice clean finish along that facing piece. So you can see it on the wrong side and then again from the right side. And now that we have that in place, we are going to now press the facing towards the wrong side of the bodice. And so just make sure you're pressing nice and crisply all along here and it should fall perfectly in place because of that understitching. Now as I press, I like to add in my pins just because I find it a little bit easier. Once again, when you get to those curves, bring out your pressing ham so that you can press those curves nicely without wrinkling any other areas of your fabric. And so I'm just going in here and attaching everything, making sure there are no wrinkles along here because we will be top stitching in our next step here. So once we have that all pinned in place, let's head on over to our machine and top stitch this. Now we wanna top stitch this using, I like to use an edge foot, but fairly close to that folded edge going all the way around the bodice. And when it is done, it should look a little something like this, really starting to come together. And now for the sleeve tabs. So with our sleeve tabs, we are going to fold them right sides together. And then we are going to stitch them the exact same way we stitched the belt, where we stitch along two out of the three sides here. Then we are going to clip those corners on the stitched end, and then use the point turner to just push this right side out. Now, as I push it right side out, I also like to push out the corners here so that it is nice and crisp. Then go ahead and give it a good press so that everything looks nice and crisp. And you can see I've marked where my buttonhole placement will be and I created the buttonholes on those tabs. And now for the buttonholes on the rest of the garment. So just go ahead and mark out those buttonholes along the front of your bodice. Now I'm marking both the buttonholes as well as the placement for my buttons so that everything lines up. I find it a lot easier to do it in this step. And where my buttons are going, I'm just creating a cross down the center. So now let's stitch up those buttonholes and you can see that they are done. And then I like to add my buttons at this point and I'm just going to add them like so. And then we can go ahead and do up the front of our bodice. And now for the sleeves. Now with the sleeves, we are going to attach the button tabs first. So we are going to place them on the wrong side of the garment and just pin them in place and we're going to base them within the seam allowance there. Next, we're going to grab the sleeve and we are going to fold under only one side at the seam allowance, which is the 5 eighths of an inch. So we're going to flip this over to the right side. Now your tab will still be on the wrong side of the fabric. That is very important. Match up the center on the sleeve with the shoulder seam and then go ahead and pin the rest of the sleeve in place with right sides together. And then you can stitch that. Now, don't worry about finishing those edges because everything is going to be turned perfectly in and concealed. Now, I went ahead and surged it just for extra measure and I like how clean it is, but you really don't have to do that. So once you have gotten that together, we are going to stitch the underarm sleeve. So right here, we're going to match up where the sleeve comes together and then just continue to match up going down the side of the bodice and the underarm of the sleeve. Now you're going to want to unfold the area that we had folded on the sleeve when you're stitching. The reason we pressed it is for a memory hem and it will be used later on. But for this purpose, we need to stitch through 
the unfolded version. So just be very careful to unfold that. And then you can see our sleeve really starting to come together. So keep it wrong sides out. And then we're going to fold that sleeve back in on itself. So you can see where we had that memory hem that we had. We're actually going to pop that up to that seam along where the sleeve is attached to the bodice of the dress. So what we are essentially doing is covering up that seam, which is why I said you didn't need to finish it in a prior step. So if you look closely here, I am placing the pins on the right side because this is going to be stitched from the right side of the garment, but we really need to make sure that we're matching it up from the wrong side. So you can see me flipping back and forth from the right and wrong side of the garment to make sure that I have everything lining up. This step is really crucial in terms of making sure everything is lined up. Use a ton of pins because if you get it off, you aren't going to catch that fabric from the wrong side. So you really want to make sure that this is nice and even. So take your time and just go all the way around and you will be stitching in the ditch, which means that you're going to stitch within that seam between the sleeve and the bodice from the right side. So you can see here, I'm just adding that pin in right along there. And I can kind of feel where that sleeve is ending and can put those pins in, but I always like to flip it over and double check to make sure that I have caught it correctly. So let's head to the machine and stitch it up. And it should look a little something like this. I've stitched in the ditch, you can barely see it. And then I've just kissed the edge of that folded sleeve. Now I'm taking my pressing ham and I am going to press the sleeve. We want to get a nice crisp edge on the sleeve where it is folded. So I'm just turning and pressing it nicely using a generous amount of steam and this fabric presses like a dream. So once we have that all completed, then you can go ahead and grab that sleeve tab and figure out where we're going to place the button. So I wanted to quickly show you how you go about stitching in the ditch here. So when you're stitching in the ditch, you can see that I'm stitching literally right in that seam allowance. Go nice and slow, take out those pins as you need them, and you will have a perfect result every single time. And it should look just like this when we look at it up close. And now for the center front and the buttons. So I'm going to stitch up the center front here, and then I'm going to stitch it. Now this is where the pattern tells you to add the buttons because we are going to be adding that button for that sleeve tab. So we're just going to mark the placement for the button, and then we are going to attach one on one side of the sleeve and one on the other side of the sleeve, just like so. And then you can use that sleeve tab to attach to your button and it creates this beautiful gathered effect within the sleeve. And now for the side seams and the optional pockets. So use strips of fusible interfacing to stabilize those areas where you're going to be attaching the pockets. Then you're going to place the pocket with the pocket bag facing downwards or to the bottom of the skirt. I'm just placing it on both sides, the front and back of the skirt, and we're going to stitch that in place. So I'm just going to grab the other one. Now I have also gone ahead and surged this edge. So you can also zigzag it if you don't have an overlocker. And then I have pressed it and top stitched that, so under stitched it so that the pocket lies nicely. Then we are going to place the front and back skirt pieces together and pin them in place. And if you were doing a pocketless version, then you would just skip to this step and just stitch straight down. In this instance, we are going to go all the way around this pocket. And so you can see I have already done that here. And then if you want to finish the edges with an overlocker, here's a fun trick. So clip out the corners of the pockets here so that you have a little hinge. And then when you go ahead with your overlocker, you can surge going all the way down and then straighten out that seam and it works beautifully. So I just want to show you a little close-up version of that. So I'm just stitching in here and you can see that I have that little notch cut out and then we are going to pull it straight and just continue going over this pocket. It works perfectly because that notch is cut on the bias. It's not going to fray and it finishes your seams beautifully. 
so you can see it is sticking out and then we're just going to stitch straight down here and finish that off and when it is complete it looks like this so you have your chain of overlocking stitches going through and we can flip this to the right side and then we're going to bar tack at the top and bottom of the pocket just for added security now for the hem so with the hem i decided to serge the bottom because it gives me a perfect quarter inch guideline but you could also stitch in a quarter inch guideline or just fold up that quarter of an inch because this has a bit of a high low hem like that in a shirt you're going to want to probably stitch that to make it a little bit easier along the curves and it is a double fold hem so once you have pressed the one fold in you're going to want to stitch it or press it again and then stitch it in place just like so and now to attach the skirt to the bodice now in this i have gone ahead and used a longest stitch length of five millimeters to create a running stitch and i've done two rows of that now i like to start and stop my gathering running stitches on either side seam this way i have more control of my gathers so first i like to match up the center front and center back and then i pin the side seams then i am able to gather from one side seam to the center and then from the other side seam to the center and vice versa for the opposite end of the bodice and skirt it really helps to control it rather than going around in an entire circle so once you have the gathers where you like it you can either wrap it around some pins or what I like to do is just knot it off that way those gathers aren't going anywhere and then I like to clip my tails just so that there's less for me to clean up when I am done stitching this in place then go ahead and place your pins to make sure those gathers are distributed just perfectly finish that on there and then stitch that and then go ahead and finish the edges with a serge or a zigzag and your finished skirt is all done and it should look just like so and you would have your ties right here with your beautiful button front coming down and you've got that nice high low hem along the skirt that kind of goes up along the sides there and then with the back you could tie your ties in the back just to cinch in the waist nicely and now for the reveal Go, what's the use in holding on? Can we find a way where we could spend some time alone? You know where to find me, you know which way to go. As long as you love me, we'll be singing all night long. So take a minute to hold me. I want your fringe dress or blouse is all complete. Now this is a great advanced beginner or intermediate pattern. It is pretty quick to stitch up and you could definitely get this done in a weekend. Once again, everything will be linked down below if you want to grab your version of this kit. And if you have any questions, do let us know. We'll be sure to reach out to you as soon as we can. Now, if you're not already a member here on Minerva, I encourage you to create a free account. It's a fabulous place where you can share all of your sewing makes. And if you're interested in seeing anything that I have been up to here on Minerva, I will link my profile down below. You can find me at Sheer Stitchery here. Until next time, makers. To be a baby tonight.